I challenge the world's most powerful AI models to make a better show than a billion dollar company in just seven days. My goal, to create a version of Cowboy Bebop so faithful, so clean, that it convinces my diehard anime friend that one guy in a basement can outproduce a billion dollar studio. Wait a second, you made this? But there's a catch. If my friend thinks my version is better than Netflix, I publish it. If he calls it slop, I have to delete the entire project from my hard drive and move on like it never happened. To beat Netflix, I needed a story that they were too scared to tell. Netflix played it safe. I wanted the gritty, bloody history of the syndicate. The early days of Spike and Vicious before the Bebop even existed. Cowboy Bebop is the perfect playground for a challenge like this because the world is so vast, yet so much remains unexplained. How did Spike meet Julia? What really happened during the war on Titan? I sat down with a blank Google sheet, a lot of coffee, and began drafting the story for our episode. Our story would be a job about Spike and Vicious that they went together in their old days in the syndicate before the events of the show. It would take place on Mars before or snapping back to the bebop for the ending. This would allow us to explore the backstory of the characters without needing to overwrite anything from the actual show. I didn't think that a script written in a week could actually bridge the gap between greatness of the old show and what we have today, but the final exchange between Spike and Vicious we wrote, I think it's the exact scene Netflix was too scared to film. So the script, done. Now that I had my script ready, it was time to plan out all of the shots needed. Now here's the hard truth. The director of the Netflix show, Andre Nemec, has a film degree, years of experience, and a budget that could buy a small country. On paper, my filmmaking pedigree is non-existent. According to some of you in the comment section, I'm just a guy destroying art with AI slop, but I have an equalizer that Andre didn't. Nano Banana Pro and a $20 a month AI subscription to Gemini. Take that Hollywood. I built a custom gem in Gemini Pro, essentially a virtual anime producer. My prompt was simple, be the greatest anime director of all time, but be 10% more creative than the guys at Netflix. I also gave it some custom instructions regarding my desired anime style with some reference images from the original anime, and boom, I now had a literal anime producing engine with the world's knowledge and the power of nine billion GPUs at my fingertips. I fed it the script and it spit out a cinematic blueprint, 90 distinct shots from wide angle Martian cityscapes to high octane action cam sequences. Converting all of these shots into images on a seven day clock felt like an impossible mission, but when you see how the fight scene sequence moved from this gem iteration all the way to final render, this was the first time I thought we might actually win the challenge. This actually might be the best thing I've ever made. So we had the vision, now we just needed the pixels. It was time for image generation. With the blueprint ready, it was time to create the frames for the episode. The decision of Netflix to make Cowboy Bebop live action and cast freaking Harold as Spike will forever confuse me. Cowboy Bebop is an anime. It needs to be an anime. And that is what we are going to make. But we need good frames to do this. I'm using Gemini's Nano Banana Pro for this. And honestly, it's currently the best image generator on the market for one specific reason. In the same place where I'm generating my shot list, talking about the episode and planning out the script, I can also to generate my images. In my custom Cowboy Bebop director gem, I also gave it a few new instructions. When I ask for an image for the shots, don't just give me one shot. Give me a three by fig grid of nine different angles for each specific shot using your knowledge of the complete history of filmmaking. This is where AI really cooks. It gives you angles you never even thought of, but keeps you in total control of the final choice. All I need to do is take the three by three grid output, pull it into Photoshop, choose the frame I think is the best, upscale it and boom we have our shot but even with all this power ai can be stubborn for instance these mars city shots they started out with that beautiful red sky but at some point i accidentally changed it to blue and i needed that red martian sky so switching these images back i fought gemini for hours changing prompts and it just would not do what i wanted it to do finally after a fresh pot of coffee and a complete prompt rewrite i was able to get it pure cinematic Martian atmosphere. We had the frames, now we needed to make them move. 
Video generation is where a project either ascends to cinema or dies in the slot pile. I use a dual model approach, cling for the heavy lifting action shots, and VO3 is my specialist for dialogue and character sequences. This is the most expensive and time consuming part of the process. Every five second clip costs about 25 cents and takes up to three minutes of soul crushing waiting. When you're managing 90 shots, you're looking at an $80 entry fee just to see your vision come to life. Now, Netflix with a $70 million budget could generate as many clips as they needed to, but for me, I am going to need to be strategic. I'll be honest, these AI subs are not cheap, so liking the video goes a long way to support me and the channel. One of the biggest challenges in video generation for this specific video was the fight scene. The current AI models are terrible at complex physics. If I just told the AI to make Vicious swing his sword, it would look like a blurry fever dream. What was the fix? I had to be surgical, and I think you'll see this in a lot of other animes. I broke actions into micro movements with different shots for each movement. So for instance, when Vicious draw his sword and slice down the enemy soldier, I generated and animated the sword draw, his sprint up to the soldier, and then the impact of his blade. By stacking these controlled puzzle pieces, I kept total control over the scene without generating too much into slop territory. The fight scene was the ultimate test for the surgical technique and wait until you see the final render. It's the difference between AI slop and actual fight choreography. After a day of digital grinding, the timeline was full, but I'll be real with you. Looking at the raw footage arranged on my editing timeline, random sounds and bad movement from the original generations, it was still slop and it was disheartening. This was never going to beat Netflix, but then I remembered the cake was only half baked. In AI filmmaking, the true magic doesn't happen in the pixels, the images, or the videos. It happens in the sound. Trust me on this one. It's time to give our characters a voice and the scene of my favorite anime of all time, some beautiful music. If the visuals are the body of the film, the sound is the soul. Cowboy Bebop isn't just an anime, it's a vibe. A future crime noir, a mix of jazz, grit, and humor that Netflix completely botched. The problem is that most AI voices sound like customer service bots. Flat, robotic, with zero emotion. I couldn't just use out-of-the-box platforms for characters as iconic as Spike and Vicious and call in the original actors for a $10 AI challenge. Probably not the best move. The workaround? I used a secret weapon. 11 Labs. 11 Labs allows you to create custom voices from audio clips that you upload, so I found 10 second clips of the original dialogue from the anime, fed them into the engine, and created custom voice clones that I could actually direct. The result? Next time, don't hesitate. Kids, not the job. It's scary how close we got. I am also incredibly impressed in how it was able to do Edward lines as well. I mean, look at the Netflix version of this. Versus my version. Don't hesitate, he says. Don't hesitate. I mean, come on. Come on. What are we doing here? Great voice acting is key, but a crime noir needs a beat. The Bebop soundtrack is legendary, and I was terrified of ruining it. My solution was that I used Suno AI to generate a custom future jazz OST. I iterated on the prompts for hours, generating track after track until I had found three key songs. A high emotion opening jazz scene to set the stage, a slow moving emotional music box theme, and then finally a lighthearted closer. Let me tell you that as a 35 year old white male, the minute that I start generating songs for any of these projects, I turn into a producer. I got the band in the booth with me. I put my hood on. And I start vibing. This is my favorite part of the entire process. When the music box track hits during the reveal with the lines that Vicious and Spike speak to each other, this really is the soul of the entire challenge, and I'm so excited to reveal this to my friends. So we had the story, we had the images, the videos, the voices, the sound effects, and the music, and now it was time for the final grind. No, God, please, no! The editing. I'll be real with you here. There is no AI shortcut for this part. Editing is hard, it is manual, and it takes an ungodly amount of time. But it's also the most satisfying part of the process. This is where everything comes together. Think about the scale of this. A production of this quality would usually cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. It'd require a studio, a crew, and a massive budget. Instead, it's just me in a dirty Nike hoodie, sitting in my basement. Depending on who you ask in the comments, that's either the coolest thing you've ever heard, or an absolute affront to humanity. Before we get to the reveal, I want to know what challenge should I tackle next? 
Drop a comment below and let me know. It was time to meet with my friend and see if I had a project I could publish and bring to YouTube or if I was going to have to hit delete on everything forever. I was nervous, but I was also confident in what I had created. The time had come. We jumped on Discord and it was time for the reveal. Okay, so Jacob, how's everything going, man? Since the last time we've seen you, any big changes? Same old, same old. Same old. Just pushing along. That actually might make you perfect for this video. It's making my own episode of Cowboy Bebop that I think is more authentic and um, more true to the original source. So what I'd like to do today is to show you that, and then you tell me, just honestly, your thoughts on it, and if you think it's better than the Netflix version. All right, yeah, absolutely. I especially thought that like the animation during that like opening sequence everything there was like like maybe a thing here and there that wasn't like super great but like overall i think these kind of shots favor what ai can do right now hell of a night to pull off a job like this the syndicate's guard is down tonight is perfect everyone's too busy looking for that midnight miracle that's the idea You don't usually see the military this close to Syndicate work. Mars doesn't protect Syndicate property for free. I was definitely really impressed by the voice acting. The voice acting was a lot better than I would have guessed uh, AI could come up with. They won't be expecting us. That thing ever blink? It watches. Lucky us. The music was great. Uh, honestly, it, it was very fitting. It felt very, uh, it, it just kind of felt like it was meant to be there with the rest of it. It was not like, I don't want to say I didn't notice it, but it felt like, but you know what I mean? It, it, it had that natural feel to it. You could tell it was made by someone who like respects the show. Exactly. Okay. Now, what were some of the AI tells that you immediately were like, what's going on here? It, the more of the tells were in the action sequence. The gunshots really weren't that bad. The, like the first, there was a shot where a guy got like his head blown off and like dismembered and all that stuff. And it really didn't look all that bad, but the sword stuff, the sword stuff just doesn't translate super well. I think if there's one thing that could help the, the action sequences, it, it kind of felt like it was the same shot each time of mm -hmm. the guys getting hit. You know what I mean? Like if, it, if there's some different angles, I think it would kind of help it a lot okay now if you were to say like this versus like tell someone to go watch this seven minute episode or tell someone to go watch all like 10 episodes of the netflix adaptation like where would your mind go i would definitely go with this because the, the live action stuff does it can't capture what animation can ai or not there's a reason why these stories are told for via animation and this kind of proves that too. This is made by AI, but I think it communicates the story better than live action. Jacob, thank you so much. And we'll see you all in the next one. I got another good one I'm cooking up for you. Awesome, looking forward to it. So the reveal was complete. My friend had given me the green light and it was time to bring my beautiful creation to the world. I was ecstatic. I had done the impossible. Netflix was nothing compared to the pure cinema I was creating in my basement. I spent hours on the perfect title and thumbnail, hit publish and went to bed a happy creator. The next morning, I opened YouTube studio and... <laughs> My baby, the project I've poured my soul into over the past week had 200 views. Now I'm a small channel, but for reference, my last challenge video did 4,000 views in this same time period. I'll be honest, this depressed me a little bit. I spent the next day playing League of Legends and drinking Ruby Grapefruit White Claws just to numb the pain. But after the dust settled, I realized I had learned one of the most important lessons of my career. 
Lesson one, the captive audience trap. My friend Jacob liked the anime because he was on a call with me. He's my friend. He's not going to just crap on my dreams live on the call. And he's also a captive audience. You guys, you all are scrolling. You have a million other videos at your fingertips that you can scroll to and click away in a nanosecond. Your choices are endless to where in that dedicated session, Jacob was expected from a social consequence to watch what I had created. So he got the full experience. Lesson number two, the Netflix bias. When you watch a show on Netflix or Crunchyroll, you give it 10 minutes to get good. Good. On YouTube, there's no brand safety net. If I start with a slow artistic intro, you don't think, whoa, Noble Goose is super deep. You think, wow, this is a small YouTuber generating slop and you leave. Maybe you're right, which brings me to lesson three. Look at the retention chart for this video. I treated this like a film festival entry with a slow burn, with Spike smoking his cigarette, with the music fading in. Well, I personally found that quite beautiful. When you think about this from all YouTube best practice retention tactics, I practically violated every single one of them in the first 30 minutes of the video, where if you watch any video on how to make a good YouTube video, the first 30 seconds is the most important. I failed the spectacle test. My animes that I create on this platform need the same high retention tactics I'm using in this video baked into the script. Action, hooks, constant payoffs. I need to fundamentally rethink how I create anime and write my scripts. Am I missing anything? I'd love for you all to check out the final project. I linked it in the description as well as it'll be in one of those pop-ups at the end of the video. You know, despite my failure to get traction on YouTube with this episode, I'm happy that I did it. At the very least, I was able to convince one of my friends that I could create a decent looking anime episode after showing him a lot of the slop I created in the fight challenge video. And you know what? I'm not done either. Either. I'm going to keep coming back, creating more anime, getting better at not only the AI side, but also the script writing side as well. Figuring out YouTube, figuring out how to find my voice and my audience until I crack the code. And if you're trying to do the same, never stop creating. No matter what people say, keep on going. We will figure this out together. If you want to check out the Cowboy Bebop episode in its entirety, go ahead and click on this video, which is the full standalone short film. Or if you want to see my last challenge video where we tried to recreate some of the most legendary fight scenes in anime history, go ahead and click on this video. And I just want to say, if you've made it this far into the video, I want to thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. You don't even understand. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.